Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice today. Great guest. Uh, you've never been on the show, the Metal Voice. It's Richie Kotzen. Is, is, am I pronouncing your name right? Kotzen. Kotzen, yeah, there you go. Kotzen, K O T Z E N. Richie with no T R I C H I E. All right, good stuff. March 26, the uh, debut album by Smith and Kotzen on BMG. Very exciting stuff. Right off the bat, I'm sure you've been asked this question like, you know, so many times now. But for the people who watch this show, tell me about how you and Adrian met and whose idea was it to put together this this great new album? Well, we met years ago. Um, now, actually, I met Natalie, his wife, first. And that, that's how I, I met Adrian. We were out one night, me and a friend. and um, to Just, and, just uh, to interrupt you I, one sec? Just so you know, Natalie's actually yeah. from Montreal. I'm from Montreal, so she's she's local here. That's right. Yep. Uh, yeah. That's Go right. Ahead. So, uh, so yeah. So uh, my friend was talking to her, and then said, "Oh, that you know, I play the guitar, this and that." And then she said that her uh, her husband played the guitar in a band, and then she said it was Adrian Smith from Iron Maiden. So I, you know, I got all excited because I'm a huge maiden fan i mean I, I was that was one of my first concerts when i was a kid was, was iron maiden just saw them in uh, allentown pennsylvania on the peace of mind tour and so uh uh i saw him man i said i gotta meet adrian and she said well he's coming to town um you know when he gets here we'll we'll set something up and so uh i ended up you know, they, they would have these like holiday parties. You know, they have a house out in, in uh, L.A., uh, not too far from where I live. And so we get have these get togethers and there's a room there where all the guitars are and the amps. And uh, it would turn into a jam session. And my wife, Julia, would be there playing the bass and, you know, we'd switch instruments and just play covers. And it was always just a great time. And in more recent times, one of these times, Natalie said that, uh, you know, you and Adrian uh, should try and uh, try and write something together. And we're both sitting around. I wasn't touring. He was here. And so, yeah, it's a great idea. So, you know, we got together and, and thought, well, this might be interesting. And then one thing led to another. And uh, we thought, well, let's go, uh, let's go make a record. And now here we got this album that, that for me, I, I, I'm really excited about this. It, this. it reminds me of one of those classic rock albums that I would have had uh, back in the day. You know, I would have been playing my, my Ozzy record or my Scorpions record and then just pop this one on. And it just kind of brings me back to an era when people made records, you know, like actually playing real instruments and, and you know, guitar forward, you know, guitar driven rock albums. So uh, I'm really happy with what we did. If you were to describe the musical direction, okay, rock, hard rock, I mean, what would you say the musical direction for the people out there who've never heard anything? Uh, you know, I think this record goes down that kind of, it's like a classic rock record, but, you know, or a harder rock thing, you know. I mean, uh, I hate kind of comparing music and bands because I think when you listen to music, you know, music's meant to be listened to, not not described with words. But uh, I just think it falls into a, a you know a classic rock vein, maybe a little heavier, you know, a little on the heavier side. Uh, definitely blues driven. Uh, you know, I think that's kind of a a common ground with Adrian and I that we, you know, Adrian loves the blues and knows a lot about blues. I grew up outside of Philadelphia, and so I was exposed to a lot of traditional R&B and soul music. Like the first concert I ever saw was Stevie Wonder. And then right after that was George Benson. So um, I have that kind of influence, you know, from when I was a, a young boy, you know. Uh, but at the same time, I like the hard rock stuff, like The Who and, and, and all those bands from that era. 
which, you know, Adrian and I always talk about Paul Rogers being one of our favorite singers. So we have a lot in common musically. And then there's a little bit of a outside thing where you know, he has the experience of being in a, guitar, a band with multiple guitar players that changes things a little bit. You know, I kind of come from a little bit of a fusion background from when I was playing with Stanley Clark and some other guys like that. So, um, you know, I, I just think we kind of have a nice blend. You know, there's enough common ground there, and then there's enough uniqueness there to, to make something really cool. Yeah, I agree. Did you ever, like, come up to him saying, look, listen to this Maiden riff I came up with and <laughs> try to deviate that way? No, you know, maybe, no. no, I don't know. Was... No, no, you know, no, no, you know, basically, uh, we are just two guys in a room just kind of, you know, playing ideas and, and riffs. And, you know, Adrian would come in with something and you know, I've got this idea. And then I'd immediately, you know, set up a, a, a template, put a click track up. And, and basically what, what would happen is and I'll give you a really good story. Um, mm -hmm. Adrian came in the studio one day with that riff to, uh, to taking my chances at that opening riff that, mm -hmm. da, 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 you know, and I said, well, that's, that's, that's a hot riff. We, we need something like that on the album. So I put up a click track and, uh, and I said, let's try an experiment. I'm going to get behind the drum set and you're going to you play, play with me. Like we were kids, you know, in a garage, we're just going to jam that riff. I'll record everything we do. And, and then, we'll play that riff for a few rounds and then I'll go off into a different thing and just follow me, you know, follow where I go. And then I'll always come back to that riff, you know, and then we'll just do it again and see what happens. So I hit record, you know, count it off and we start jamming it and I recorded everything. And so in the end, some of that very first recording ended up as part of the song, like part of that groove and uh, part of that guitar riff. And then from there, you know, we were able to come back and listen to it and say, okay, cool, that sounds like that could be a chorus, what we just did there. And then, uh, you know, we wrote it you know, that way. So that, that was a different approach uh, to, to writing a song. And then in some, some instances, you know, uh, he, I'd have a concept for a lyric or a melody and we'd, we'd build chords around it. So it was just a real open kind of session. You know, almost like a friendly tennis match where you bounce, you know, try to get a volley going. You don't want to defeat anybody, but just kind of, you know, keep the ball in the air, so to speak. What What about the lyrics? Did you go 50-50 or is it who was it more weight on you or more weight on him? Or how did that come out? You no, know, I, I think it was pretty much uh, an equal collaboration. I mean, it wasn't planned any one way or the other, but, you know, in general... There was a, certainly a, a small element involved of whoever thought of it would probably sing it. So, for example, uh, you know, Scars, you know, he's got that verse that he comes in with. And uh, I remember he did that vocal. He initially did a rough pass. And then I said, well, let me try something for the pre-chorus. And I, I remember coming in just kind of freestyling, you know, that, that section. And then that led me to the chorus melody. And I, I I know the lyric, you know, uh, somehow that, that came out uh, when I, you know, I just kind of start singing stuff and suddenly, you know, the lyrics are there. Uh, and then other times, you know, I remember uh, Adrian had Glory Road was a song that he had a concept for and uh, had a chorus. I remember he left one night and I was messing around. We had assembled the lyrics and uh, there was a melody that he had an idea for that I was trying to. You there? I think I lost you. It really was a collaboration. I can say this. There was never a point where someone brought a song in and said, oh, I, I had this thing for years, didn't know what to do with it. You know, everything, at least to my knowledge, that we did, was a true collaboration. I know I, I didn't bring anything in that I have worked on previously. It was all stuff that we kind of worked on together. Cool. What was the most unexpected thing working with Adrian Smith or a surprise or, Oh, wow. I didn't realize this. Well, I guess one of the things that, that I noticed that was a, a cool thing was that his, uh, his ear for 
uh, har- uh, harmony, counterpoint, and melody uh, as a guitar player. And mm-hmm. so uh, there were a couple instances of some of these songs where I remember thinking, okay, we're done, let's move on. And uh, I, I said, oh, well, that sounds good, we're done with that. He goes, well, wait a minute, I've got an idea here, let me try something. And then he'd come up with like these kind of counterpoint guitar parts that were very melodic, almost like a hook within themselves. And, and, you know, he's got one that he put in Taking My Chances and Scars has this cool call and answer thing. So, you know, the, his his ability to to hear that sort of secondary part, something that really uh, struck me as, as a, a, something very special, which probably stems from years of, you know, being in a band, you know, with, a, with another guitar player, you know. So uh, I've always been in my endeavors the only guitar player so you know it's a different approach so that was pretty cool did you have to like pinch yourself man i'm doing an album with adrian smith wow i can't believe this you know yeah, it you some... know, it, it hit, yeah it hits me from time to time when i i look at at this album i got sitting here in my office and i look at the cover and his name and my name and it's 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 something real <laughs> special for me like i said you know growing up the, what tour did you see that? What tour, day, did, what tour did you see Iron Maiden on? I, I saw I saw them on Peace of Mind. Yeah, me too. Do you remember who opened up? Was it uh, Coney Hatch or I can't remember who it was Fast, in the U.S. Fast Way. Fast, Fast way, way. That's on it. The yeah, yeah. It was a great yeah. tour. I saw that. It was amazing. Yeah, and uh, there he is. Um, what about Nico? So Nico plays on Solar Fire. What was your experience like that working right. with Nico? Well, you know, that involved very interesting, you know, at, at the point that that decision was made, we had a bunch of tracks, you know, that I had played drums on. And on that track, uh, I had done like a basic, you know, like a basic loop. So we had something to write to. And so we were overdubbing parts and, and figuring out choruses. Actually, it's very funny how that chorus happened. Uh, I was singing that melody. All right. And I do this all the time. And a lot of the guys do it when they write. And I was singing like phonetics, like, you know, not real words, but it sounded like it could have been words. But I was singing sure. it with a proper tone in my voice to get that melody. And going. So yeah. Adrian, yeah, exactly. And then so Adrian heard it and said, oh, wow, it sounds like you're saying solar fire. I'm like, really? Well, what does that mean? And so we started talking about it. We we came up with some lyrics, came up with a story and uh and we wrote those lyrics together. And so he said, you know, I could really hear Nico on this track. And, I, and then, of course, I said, well, that would be, be great. You know, that would be excellent. So uh, Nico came in and, and, and played on it and just really, to me, just took it to another level. He has a style, you know, that you know, an identity, a personality on the drums where he does a certain kind of fills that you know, they're kind of like these machine gun fills that go right around the kit. You know, it's something that I don't, I can't really do it. And uh, so, you know, he, he just kind of set it off, you know, is what I'd say. Just brought it to another level. So I was real happy and honored to have, you know, to be in a position to have him on the album. Did you meet him before? No. Nicole? Well, no, I didn't. Well, the, actually, casually I met him when, when Maiden played uh, Los Angeles. I was backstage and, you know, I met some of the guys, but no, no not, not like a, nothing really. You not know, like this. Did, did not you much re- more than hello, how you doing? Yeah. Was, was it file sharing where you put it together with Nico or did he actually come in and, and you know, you work with him in the studio? No, it, 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 in that instance, that was a sharing situation because he's got a, a spot down in Florida somewhere. And so that was a, a file situation, but all the other stuff, you know, Adrian and I were together for that. Yeah. Is he a funny guy, Nico? I was say that again. Is, is he is he humorous? Is he funny? You know, he seems to be like a funny guy. Well, like, I, you know. like I said, I, I would I wouldn't really know his personality oh, okay. because we we sent him the files. You know, I sent oh, okay. files to, to Florida, wherever he is, and then he sent them back, but. Uh, and the only time I, I met him was real brief backstage. So, oh, um, gotcha. you know, I don't really know. 
Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe you talked on the phone, you're talking about the songs, but it's okay. Uh, how do you compare this yeah. album? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how do you compare this music that you're doing with Agent right now to sort of like the previous work you've done in the past? I know you said this is hard rock, blues oriented, and it does sound a lot like that. Absolutely. But I mean, do you think you're sort of evolved into this direction? Uh, how does it compare to everything you've done in the past? Or maybe everything you've done in the past has led to this moment? Well, you know, there's definitely an argument to make that you know, your, the past uh, leads you to where you are now. I mean, obviously, uh, you, know, you make decisions and, and you end up in a spot. Now, um, I'm lucky that I have a, a long history of working, you know, with great people. I mean, obviously, the bulk of my work I'm working alone, but I have those spots where I've been able to do some collaborations here and there uh, with people and pick, pick up things, you know, learn stuff or whatever it is. Uh, so I think one of the things that makes this even work is, is the previous experience uh, of, you know, it's like you, you get a certain kind of confidence at the same time, you, you, you feel like you have less to really to prove. So if you were coming into something like this and you didn't have the, the experience, you might get caught up in, in how you're represented and worried about, you know, this guy did more solos than me or I'm not getting the, to show what I can really do. So all that stuff, that bullshit is not there because, you know, we've both done this long enough uh, and been represented well. So, you know, for me, at no point did I think of any of that other than the song. That's the only thing that I really, really concerned myself with was, is the song working? Does it make sense? Does it sound like a song? Is there a story there? Um, you know, is it, is it, are we being represented artistically, you know, with the lyric? Does it make sense? You know, it was all about the song. And then once we knew and agreed that the components for the song were there and that they were working, that's when you get into the, you know, the, the fun stuff, deciding, oh, well, I'm going to play the Strat here. I'm going to you know, do something with the Telecaster or, you know, whatever, all that other stuff. But, you know, I think the fact that we've made enough records in the past, you know, I personally feel like I've been well represented as far as who I am as an artist and what I do, especially after making 50 for 50. I mean, at that at that point, you know, I, I, I could probably never make another record again and not really worry about it. But, you know, <laughs> I always have yeah. new ideas, so I'll probably always make records. Uh, but, you know, it was just real easy, real simple to make, like you said, probably because of all that stuff that we've already done in the past. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, is it, and just on the last question, in regards to the Winery Dogs, is there any album you'll be working on in the future? Yeah. Or is that, is that pretty much it? Well, that has kind of been left in a, a little bit of a limbo stage because pro a lot to do with you know, the pandemic coming. We had done a, a tour in 2019, and I, re I remember wanting to do that because, you know, we hadn't worked together in a while. There was, you know, talk of a new record, but we didn't have the timing together to really get in the room. So we did do that tour, which was really fun. And we really did get along great. Uh, not that we never did. We always do. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was, I walked away from that tour with a really good feeling about the future of the band. And, um, you know, I knew they had plans with their other group that they have and, and tour dates. So I, you know, uh, pursued uh, my 50 for 50 record and also knowing that Adrian and I were going to do something. So in the back of my mind, uh, with all that stuff going on, I figured at some point in 2020 that the three of us, the winery dogs, would get together and maybe throw some ideas around and do some writing. Because the reality is with that band, we have to be in the same room at the same time. Otherwise, it's not really a winery dog record. It becomes something else. So... Uh, you know, the pandemic kind of just messed everything up for us. Uh, and, and especially now you've got uh, Mike is in Pennsylvania, Billy's in Nashville, I'm in California. So, you know, it makes it a little difficult. I'm not really ready to jump on an airplane just yet. Uh, but at some point, 
what I've been saying is that, you know, we did the first record at my house in California. Um, we've done pre-production for tours and, and written a couple songs at Mike's house in Pennsylvania. So maybe this time when the schedules line up, we can go down to Nashville and uh, take over Billy's house and do some work down there. Did you get your vaccine? You ready to go? Well, I'm I'm not ready yet. You got to let the people that really need it uh, get it first. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, as soon as the, as soon as I can get that, I'm going to do it. And uh, you know, I have a feeling that in order to to do what we do, uh, pretty soon, you know, they're going to make it that you have to have it. So. Uh, I have no objection uh, to getting it. You know, we had uh, a bout with COVID here. My wife tested positive, and then I ran out five, six days later and got a test, and I was negative. But then, no sooner did I get the test, I got sick with all the same symptoms. So I can only assume that I had it as well. Uh, But, uh, you know, I've... I've been way sicker in my life, uh, but it's not like that for everybody. See, this thing affects everybody differently, and that's why it's so fucking dangerous, you know. So, um, you know, I think people got to be responsible, and and now that we know how serious it is, obviously, you know, got to do what you got to do to stay uh, stay safe. I heard that one of these companies, though, has a pill that they're working on that, like, if you get uh, if you when you first get sick. I think it's Merck or one of these medical companies. Mm-hmm. And if you take this pill, it'll knock it out of you. So that that would be great if that if that if that happens. So uh, yeah, um, I haven't heard that, I but know, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google yeah. it. It's there. Yeah, it's a company called Merck, and and that's that's a story that they're developing this pill. That's but amazing. um, you know, I, I just want to get get out there and and play again. You know, I I, I will say this. Uh, I I didn't. I found a way to enjoy the year off i really did you know embrace it and uh, I, I liked being home and spending time at home but now at this point i'd like to get out there and play some shows actually this is my last last question you can make it quick if you play live are you going to play any iron maiden tunes or is there maybe one song you go i love this song i'd like to play yeah you know that's a good question and that's something that we have to think about because we only have nine uh, songs on the album and so i would imagine probably what we do is play the entire album maybe add in one or two covers maybe just for for fun put in one or two covers that we would play at the jam sessions at adrian's house just to kind of tie it together you know here's where it started and then um you know maybe we do one of, one of adrian's songs from maiden and Maybe pick one of my songs from one of my records and yeah. put a set together. You know, it's, not, it's something we got to think about because you know, I mean, you need time, right? You need you need you need to perform. You need performance time. I would think "Wasted Years" would be a good one for you and your voice. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That it would, would be fit. The one. Write That's it down. Good. Take notes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I Thank know. You. But hey, if we're out there and we're doing, if we're out there and you hear us doing that, then you can take credit for that. Say, I told him to do that. <laughs> March 26th, I've heard it. Sounds great. If you love hard rock and blues, classic rock, this is the album. Smith Coatsen, thank you so much uh, for being on the show, and we will talk soon. All right, thanks. Bye.